Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another of a series of Sky Switch webinars. I'm Andy Abramson, and I am delighted to be able to host today's webinar and to have so many of you joining us either live here at 11 o'clock Eastern time or listening to the recording at your convenience. The pleasure will truly be all yours. We have another one of our really close friends of the SkySwitch family, a member of the SkySwitch store that Kelly Osborne runs so well. If you don't know Kelly, you should reach out to her at store at skyswitch.com because when we have guests from the various brands that are inside, you learn so much more, and so do I, about what's new with them. And today, we have the good fortune to have with us from Snome, one of our true valued and trusted partners, Corey Cather. Corey's a regional account manager. He is a veteran. And by the way, he has done a really good job at preparing today's presentation deck so much so they said to him last week on our pre-call, Corey, it's the, the best deck we've had all year. So you're going to see a lot. You're also going to hear a lot from Corey. And we're also going to be joined by Ian Mitchell. He's product manager. So you've got two of Snow America's best here to talk with you about what's new and different with Snow. Now, a lot of times we talk about solutions that can work for any sector. But today, Corey and Ian are going to be talking about mobility solutions for restaurants and retail locations. And we know from our recent survey, and you can still supply us answers, that a large number of you have restaurants and retailers as part of your customer makeup. So when we look at verticals across the telecom industry that have a specialized high demand for products that are built for them and services to back them up, we also know that that means the right hardware, the right desktop phones, the right cordless, the right mobility solution, the ability for people to wander around and not be chained to where that phone was, but to be where they need to be is so important. So since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, Snome has been able to successfully provide retailers, restaurateurs, remote business operators with a lot of products that really meet their needs. Today, we're gonna to cover just what Snome is and the status of the recent integration with VTech, the Snome product mix, that works for restaurants, retail, and the work from home verticals, which you know is not going away. All the stats keep showing is that work from home is here likely to stay. We're also gonna get an overview of Snome's M100 KLE product features and do a little line review. And then something special, which is good for your customers, but which is also good for you, is the Snome and user rebate launch that Corey and Ian are gonna talk all about. I'm your moderator. I'm here, I do a little bit of, of a jack of all trades at SkySwitch, overseeing all communications, all the partner programs, like working with Snome, events, webinars, you name it, I'm doing it. Because SkySwitch, everybody at SkySwitch has to do a little bit of everything. I um, also wanna thank Erica Vasquez, our marketing manager, who is doing such a great job of pulling together everything for today. Um, a little background about Corey, he's been around for 30 years. That means he's a veteran. That means he knows the industry really, really well in technology. He's been with uh, Snome and VTech since 2015, starting as an inside channel account manager in the business solution division, and now working with all the companies like SkySwitch in the SIP service provider industry. Then we have Ian Mitchell, a product manager. Basically, his job is to figure out what you want and talk to the engineers and put it in the product, and then at the same time, make sure that you understand what product is right for what type of customer. With that, I'm gonna pass it over to Corey for more about what's going on with Snome and their vertical industry deployments. Hello, Corey, hello, Ian. Hi, Andy, how are you? Great. Thanks for having us on. I feel like that was such a, an incredible summary that uh, I feel like uh, we're, we're good to go. I think you, I think you got everything in there. So. Well, let's take it away. <laughs> that was, that was uh, very, very well done. <clears throat> and we have Ian Mitchell with us here as well. So, hello, Ian. Hi, everybody. Yep. 
So we wanted to just kind of reintroduce we as as we do often um, Snome as as a brand. Obviously, Snome was uh, purchased by by VTech a few years back, and our um, mission here is to kind of reemphasize Snome as the SIP brand. So moving forward, again, everything. Um, made by uh, VTech is going to be branded as Snome, um, and that does obviously bring in the the expertise, um, the experience of the Snome brand and ZipDeck, along with all the advantages VTech has, which you know North American support and uh, everything else we have for including the manufacturing, um, you know, from the VTech side. So, kind of the best of both worlds, adding Snome and VTech together. Uh, but again, all the all the brands that you'll see as far as the SIP phones will be will be just Snome. Yeah, Corey. Over the years, Snome has always been such a well-designed looking brand. The product has always had what we like to call curve appeal. It looks good on the desk. It looks good on the tabletop. And VTech was always known for really its strong distribution and its manufacturing capacity. So it's a great marriage between the two. And really, as you get into more and more vertical industry deployments, the the design sense that Snome has always brought, that European sense of style, has always been very helpful. So, Absolutely. Well, today we do want to touch on, uh, you know, we'll touch on some of the products as well, but what we do want to touch on is how some of the products that we have out right now specialize a little bit more in um, in specific verticals. So we, we actually have product that can touch on all of these verticals. Uh, for manufacturing, warehouse distribution, healthcare. Uh, but the, the ones that are getting a lot of attention lately are going to be restaurants and retail. Those are active, obviously, in the case of restaurants, even if not everybody's seating, their restaurants are taking orders and doing takeouts. Um, and then obviously retail's picking up with, with restrictions as well. Um, the nice thing we have is we have product that's really easy to use and, and deploy in those, in those areas. Uh, and then, of course, the other vertical that we'll touch on, as you noted, Andy, will not likely be going away, is remote work. Um, so we'll touch on on how the products that uh, will help you with remote working as well. When you look at all this, you know, you look at all the deployments. Your your first area that we're going to talk about today is, you know, up until COVID. I would spend a lot of time in restaurants, probably five nights a week sometimes, I would go out to restaurants and COVID hit and my personal time in restaurants declined, but they're still open. And restaurants have different needs than say an office because yes, there is an office for the manager, but they're in, that's in the back. You got a receptionist who's known as a hostess, you've got a bar, you've also got a kitchen. So all of those areas really need something different and then you have people like the manager or the GM or the service manager, and they're running around the floor, but they still need to be reached. And we all know that sometimes cell phones are not that good inside a restaurant. They just don't have reception. There's no gas there. How Snome attacking this very variable, and I say variable use case, because it's not like one phone is right for everybody. Right. And, and if you are looking for DECT, for example, <clears throat> with the ability to have quite a bit of range. So for example, our KLE line, um, it, it tackles a couple of items with, with uh, restaurants and with retail. Uh, one is using decked, we do have an up to 500 foot range. So with decked, obviously it depends a little bit on your environment, but, it, but it's up to 500. Um, we do have not only decked handsets, but there's actually a decked desk set as well that you can put at the front station or, or in the back office. Um, but what that does allow you to do is, again, carry the phones around with you, have some mobility where, as opposed to being tethered, you know, with, with a wire. Um, one of the only things that it does is the Kaylee system. It stands for, you know, key line emulation. It works, it, it helps in many ways. So it also helps in that um, it's easy to use where you have lines dedicated um, emulated lines dedicated for calls coming in. So it does not necessarily assign, you know, uh, specific lines to each individual user. In restaurant and retail, there are, there's often, you know, quite a bit of turnover, um, or you're just moving phone to a different location. It avoids you having to program the phones for a specific person. They're for a specific location or a specific station. Um, 
they're easier to use. So if you do want to put something on hold, you can just holler at somebody next to you or, or use the intercom to let them know that there's a you know, call on line two. Uh, we'll go into a little bit more detail how that works, but very easy to use, very easy to communicate with uh, other people and have them pick up a call very easily through the KLE. Um, you can use more traditional um, phones as well, like the D700 Death Set series. We do have those in restaurants as well. Um, and that's, again, if you want to have just a phone behind the bar, um, you know, that's, that's an option where you, you have them more uh, tethered, if you will. You have them more locked down. And then, of course, the PA1, I think everybody's, uh, most people are familiar with that. Uh, so if you are in a larger area, you need to broadcast, especially when you get into things where, you know, more and more people are trying to get outside as opposed to being uh, inside the building. Uh, so the PA1 broadcasting allows you a little bit more flexibility on how to uh, announce for a call, but also just make announcements throughout the system, uh, throughout the building as well. Now that also lets you do music broadcast. Is that music on hold or is that music being played through the restaurant environment? Oh, uh, that would be music played through um, like the restaurant environment or something like that. Um, the music on hold, of course, would usually um, be coming through the service provider themselves. Okay. So the, this way they're able to manage all that quote fake noise inside the restaurants like TGI Fridays does where they have canned noise that's playing that makes it sound like there's more people there and provides yeah. a nice gentle backdrop in of, of glasses clinking, bottles breaking, um, silverware you know, being jangling, all those things that, you know, the normal sounds of the restaurant. that <laughs> Kind of like Major League Baseball with their crowd noise now, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, maybe they're using, maybe they're using snow for that. <laughs> there you go. I so, don't have word on that, but that, that could work. <laughs> oh, I just, I just think that this type of stuff, it, it really, it's showing that you're integrating into the exact environment of a restaurant. Um, what are some of the more successful deployments that you've seen um, when it comes to restaurants? So we did actually recently deploy or have a partner deploy this um, in a 400 plus restaurant chain. Um, the, the items noting kind of an after, you know, talking with them after the fact is it was very easy to deploy. So each restaurant took uh, two to three phones. Um, each one had at least one of the desk phones for kind of the front station and then one to two of the handsets to walk around with as well. Um, but because only the base station needs to be provisioned, uh, it was very easy to deploy from, you know, remotely. So they were able to, you know, ship these to all 400 plus locations and then, you know, provision, uh, pre-provisioned and then obviously deployed them over a period of a couple months. So I think within two to three months, uh, the whole, the whole program was launched. Um, so what they were able to do is the, the customer, they were able to dramatically cut their costs from previously what they had, which was, was analog. Uh, but even, you know, even shopping, they were able to save money over other sub solutions. So uh, the other thing I'll go into briefly, but the, the K lease phones are also on a discount on sale right now. They have been for a few months and they're going to continue at least through the end of the year. So they are at a significant savings than their normal price. Um, but the one thing that really made <clears throat> their life easier is they didn't have to train people how to park a call, how to transfer to a specific extension. Literally, when you answer the phone, there's a hold button. You put it on hold, somebody else can pick it up, walk around with it. Um, so there's very little to no training for new personnel. And again, you know, as they get turnover, um, they don't have to kind of reprogram or relabel the phones, right? So it's based on stations, not individuals. Well, I'm sorry about that. Well, that makes it really easy for someone also to go from a, a 400 chain restaurant, a 400 location restaurant chain. Managers might go from place to place or regional managers go in to fill in for the GM or the restaurant manager or chef comes in to fill in for somebody you know, like a floater, same way in pharmacist environments and pharmacies where you know one day a week there's a, there's a substitute pharmacist, there's no learning curve. It just works and it's gonna be the same thing in every location. So as a person may move or be relocated or fill in as a substitute, they don't have to say, how's your phone system work? 
Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I and saw that we actually do... had a. Yeah, I ahead. saw that we actually had a question um, online asking if this was a replacement for um, our Sinjay product, and I did want to oh, mention that um, you know the the Sinjay is definitely there for the um, analog installations and the M100. Um, it can kind of be a replacement for it. Um, in the SIP side, but of course um, the SIP is going to be different from the analog and we know that, you know, there are still those customers out there that um, still have analog lines and maybe they don't want to go through the expense of um, trying to upgrade to, um, you know, Ethernet deployment or, or a, a SIP deployment. But uh, at this point, we're basically servicing uh, both options um, on a go forward basis. So, you know, I'm going to follow up on that. This particular 400 location restaurant train chain was, was actually looking at Sinjay originally as well. So this ended up being a better solution for them. So, so Sinjay for, you know, since I came up is a, is the, is an AT&T branded uh, four line business phone that's cordless. So this would be the, uh, the SIP uh, version of it, if you will. So this is the analog solution and also, I mean, this is the digital solution versus the analog solution. And Correct. also the deck solution, which provides much smoother experience. Those of you who had, um, deck phone experience. I've been using DEC since the dawn of, of, dawn of DEC um, at different times. It's just the audio quality is usually better. It doesn't suffer from the interference that a Wi-Fi phone does where everything from baby monitors to microwave ovens and certainly some restaurants have microwaves. That could cause you know interference and distortion. There's a question that's come up from Bill Smith related to the KLEs though. And he wants to know if the KLE line is going away or being revised because he caught wind of the current sales pricing that's in there, which of course is always there to drive sales. Is the KLE line going away? It's not going away. Um, in fact, it's, it's uh, stronger than ever. So um, we, we are even working on cat out of the bag a little bit, the next generation. So um, it will not be going away anytime soon. Um, you will actually see sometime down the road uh, a, a new version of that. Um, probably not in the very near future, but you will see it because it is it is uh, being looked at. So a little, little, bit of, uh, little bit of a leak there, but no, we're actually very excited about it and what it can do and where we can go from here. Um, the sale price really is a, a, really a promotion or a program to try to move, move more phones. I mean, that's the bottom line. Right. That's what promotion's for. I mean, we all try, you know, in the promotion world, it's stimulate trial, promote brand switching, drive repurchase. Those are three tenets of, of promotion. And in the case of better pricing, it's designed to get people just to buy. And I think people are buying. So what's the end result with um, this 400 restaurant chain? What kind of satisfaction levels are you seeing? What kind of comments are you getting? Um, what would you want to add on to them that, that they didn't buy, that they could buy? Because we all know that no two restaurant use cases are ever identical other than when it's within a brand. I mean, think about Starbucks. You always know you're in a Starbucks even if you don't see the sign because the way they're designed. But in this case, is there anything, any lessons learned that the Snome team has picked up from this deployment? There, there's always room to add more product, for example. Um, but I, some of the interesting feedback was that the the end result is the customer was very satisfied and provided an additional referral to the specific customer that, uh, or partner that implemented this. So they actually had another, uh, I believe it was 75 uh, restaurant chain uh, that was referred to them uh, because of their customer satisfaction. Um, as well as they're actually now reviewing and testing a, uh, uh, putting the PA one into all the locations. So, this was originally put in obviously with just the phone system and then after more thought and seeing how, kind of how the industry is changing and you know more again more people are going outside they are testing it with the pa1 so that they can kind of just expand their footprint on site a little bit more um and and may implement that as well so there are other obviously always other products that you can you can add to it and then of course happy customers means more customers Corey, with, every, with the restaurants doing social distancing and a lot of restaurants only being allowed to do outdoor dining, has the decked product been a big help in that area at all? For sure, for sure. Um, you know, we, we've, we have more inquiries in the last, you know, six months, but especially the last three months, I think, than we've had 
you know, the previous, uh, the, the previous year for sure. Uh, but there's definitely more interest in flexibility. And this, this kind of equates into the same, you know, work from home portion too, right? It, when you don't have to be tethered, it's, it's a huge plus. And in a case of restaurants and of course home, it's nice if you have a home office with a desk, but you know, a lot of times you just, you do want to be roaming. You want to be in the backyard. You want to be by the pool if you have one, <laughs> but uh, you just want a little bit more flexibility and deck just gives that to you. Now the deck, um, the base station, when they're using the deck handsets in an outdoor location, where is that residing? Is it residing indoors behind the wall or is it actually outdoors? It would, it would still be indoors. Um, again, the range is what gives you the flexibility to go outside because, uh, you know, we, we quote and we always hesitate to make sure we clarify, you know, it's up to 500 feet. Right. Realistically, in an office, you're going to have other obstacles that will reduce that range, right? Um, but you do have substantial range that will have, should have no problem going from outside uh, in a back office to, uh, or inside in a back office to outside. So I don't know, Ian, if you want to touch on that anymore, but. Uh... No, definitely. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the base would definitely be located somewhere within the house. Um, and the, the range itself is what's going to be able to get you, you know, to the front of the house. If you're, if you're checking the mail or the back of the house, if you know, you want to sit on the back patio. Um, I, I can definitely tell you um, from personal experience, you know, I, I use one of my house and so I can get all through, um, you know, about 2,700 square feet of my house, including the, the backyard. If I, you need to go into the shop to, to get something real quick, or if I'm, you know, walking down the street to, to check the mail. So um, it's, it's that, yeah, it's definitely that flexibility of kind of being able to get, um, you know, both, both floors, if you have two floors in your house or um, anywhere kind of within your yard, you don't necessarily have to put that base outside in order to do that. What's really impressive though, is that it's able to go through the walls and, you know, whether it's concrete, brick, stucco, wood, you know, paint layers, etc. The because of the frequency that's in use for deck, and it's a lower frequency than other things, it's able to penetrate walls. And that's what gives you the benefit and you don't have to put it outside. Darren Sidweeks want to know if you have range extenders or repeaters for your deck platform. Yes, we do have repeaters and we do support um, up to three of them per deployment. So you can, are these daisy chained or are these done in serial? We don't support uh, daisy chain, but of course, if you have your base in the middle, you can kind of put one on the west side and one on the east side and then one on the north side or something like that in order to just give you um, that expansion to kind of like your, your circle um, of range. Right. And then it just hands over as it goes from um, base station to base station without any loss of call connectivity. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And just to note, the, the repeater, I think when you're using the repeater, you are limited to uh, two calls, right? Even yeah. With the repeater? Okay. Yeah. So, and we'll go into a little, little bit briefly here in just a second here too, but you do have the ability to have six calls through this system. Um, you know, there's four key line uh, buttons on the front of it, but you can actually handle uh, six calls at a time through the actual KOE system. Well, Corey, if someone's deploying this in a restaurant environment, what are some of the use cases and some of the recommended devices that you have that are going to make it easy for people to understand what they need? What's the makeup look like? It definitely depends on the, you know, the restaurant, what their, <clears throat> what their uh, specific needs are. But really, um, you know, for the most part, I would say what we run into is a lot of people are going to want that that decked desk phone as a kind of a stationary phone so they they are looking for kind of one <laughs> one phone that's always at the front counter or that's always you know back behind in the office uh one phone that they know where it's going to be all the time right um so that and then of course the handsets uh it just depends on you know the number of employees the size of the restaurant um, we do have not only just the standard handset but we now have a rugged handset uh, so if it's something where, you know, again, at a restaurant, it's not, not a bad idea, definitely like in a warehouse and other areas, there's a ruggedized handset that can handle a little bit more abuse, if you will. Um, but well, even the rugged, that, handset, even... the rugged handset's great in the kitchen. I mean, you've got yeah. lots yeah, of exactly. pans, you've got, you've got <laughs> knives, but you also have steaming hot pots and you've got, you know, you've got grills on and you've got fire uh, on the burners. And so when you say rugged, does it, is it waterproof like IP67 or IP68? Is it temperature proof like the 
like this, uh, there's handsets in the mobile phone business that Sonom makes, Sonom Tech makes, that are designed to pretty much take anything. W when you say rugged, just what do you mean by rugged? So it's not a full IP65 rating or anything like that, um, but we did put um, additional seals um, on all the casings and stuff like that. So it is um, splash proof and it is does have the locking battery door. Um, you know, it can it can be uh, dropped and kind of thrown and abused. Um, we actually have a, a video that I did on our uh, workshop channel, and uh, I think I, I dropped it about 30 times and I even kicked it and stuff like that, and uh, it was able to su survive that beating. So. <laughs> so what you're saying is it take a licking and keeps on ticking which yes. is the old <laughs> so, yeah and on top of that we've actually not only do, do our, our desk phones have a three-year warranty but we've actually included that all of the products including the, the decked handset have a three-year warranty on them as well now it doesn't cover if you run it through the dishwasher but uh, it, it does cover uh, normal manufacturer uh, warranty which you know will just be a kind of an, an exchange type of a deal what happens when somebody accidentally puts it in the oven? <laughs> that would not be a very good dinner, I'd have to say. <laughs> nor, would it, nor would it ring true. It would be no more calling on that device. Right, exactly. probably, you likely would say that phone's cooked. Oh, there you go. Well done. Good, good pun. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, again, they're pretty durable, but we're, we're not going to promise they can survive uh, an oven or a dishwasher. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, why don't we keep going on some of the other devices and some of the other use cases and how you make Yeah, I was going to say retail, we can just touch on that because a lot of the things that we talked about on restaurant really apply the same way to retail, right? So same type of thing as far as being able to walk around, get outside. Um, so you do have really the same options when it comes to uh, retail, including um, the PA1, being able to broadcast outside if people are, are shopping outside or in a large, uh, large area. Um, so we'll cut down on that, that time right there. Uh, work from home. Obviously we're getting into more people are using headsets. I'm actually using the a 100 uh, M headset right now, um, on this call. Um, uh, but we do have some other options as well. Um, so the D 700 series does have a, a USB, uh, port on it, which allows you to put a, a Wi-Fi dongle or a duct dongle on it. Um, so the Wi-Fi dongle allows you to take the phone, you know, in different places throughout the house and still be able to connect to Wi-Fi without having to have a hard connection. Uh, now you do need power to the phone um, to be able to do that with the Dust Series. Um, but also with the deck dongle, it allows you to connect to one of our decked headsets that are on the VTech or AT&T brand as well. Uh, but it also allows you to, and I'll show a slide later, but it allows you to connect to our C52 decked speakerphone, um, which you can then carry you know, around in your office or to the next room as well. Um, and then of course the M100, we really kind of touched on that uh, as a work from home solution. Again, all the same things apply with, with home usage, just that you can again, take it out to the backyard or, or roam around a lot more, um, you know, sit in front of the, uh, of the TV as you're, you're watching the baseball game and working at the same time. I also I wanted to, you have a deck speakerphone? That, that sounds really cool. Yeah, so we, I'm going to jump, can I jump forward here? I'm going to jump a couple slides here, so I apologize. I'm going to show this. I'll come back. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to show this slide, which I probably should have put with the phones. Um, this slide right here, what it does is uh, shows you the, the dongle and the uh, deck dongle and the Wi-Fi dongle. So the deck dongle will plug into the D717, the D735, and the D785. And that literally uh, will, um, and actually I don't know with the dongle, maybe you can correct me, what's the range we have on that uh, with the deck dongle? Um, you get a little bit shorter um, than like a traditional uh, deck handset. So you get about 300 feet of indoor range. Which is still pretty good and should allow you to, you know, again, take it to the back patio and use that while you're on the phone. But yep. that, yeah, that is unique in the, in the pairing and what you can use with just your normal desk phone. So I did dongle, want to mention the, the great thing about this dongle is um, it actually supports our headset and the conference phone at the same time. And it has dynamic switching. So if you do have this deployed and let's say, um, you know, your oh, uh, work from home environment, you can actually... Um, 
be on a private phone call, but if you want to switch to your speakerphone just to kind of, you know, give your headset a rest or whatever, you literally on the phone call, just hit the talk button and the audio automatically switches over to it. And then if you want to go back to your headset, just hit the talk button on the headset and it just switches back. So the wireless conference speakerphone connects to the phone or connects to the network? The deck it, network? it connects to the, the dongle itself. Okay. So yeah. you, in, in a, like a private dining room environment, you would need one of the SNOME D-series uh, desk phones connected with a dongle on it. And then on the conference table, you would have the speakerphone. Yes. But hold that thought. We have another solution for you here. We'll cover it in a minute too. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to back up here too. Well, a little too far. And I um, was going to mention also, uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Corey, no, 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 uh, for stepping in is um, our phones, because they all have the USB port. We also do support um, like competitors, uh, USB uh, headsets, along with um, the RJ9 headsets that have electronic hook switch. So we do support a very wide range of headsets, even down to the D717. Um, kind of entry level phone. So if you do want to pair, you know, your favorite kind of Plantronics or Sennheiser headset with it, um, we support all those options. That's great. So Corey, you were about to say there's something in the scenario. Yeah. So what I'll let me, let me uh, wrap up. I'll wrap up on the, uh, the the desk phones and the KLE here. But just to touch base on it again, all the all these products have a have a three year warranty. And uh, the one item I was going to say is you you can support up to uh, eight SIP lines or eight SIP accounts with this. And then I mentioned you had six concurrent calls. So you can have six concurrent calls just to follow back up on the repeater. When it does go through the repeater, it does limit you to two. So do keep that in mind as well. Um, this is kind of just showing real quick on the KLE how, um, you know, how, what it looks like, right? So when you get a call in, there's an L1, there's a line one, it will blink. You can then, anybody that is on that, connected to that base will then be able to just hit that line and answer. Uh, and then simply like an old fashioned phone, you can just put it on hold. Somebody else can pick up that L1. You don't have to park it. You don't have to transfer it. You don't have to retrieve it. Um, and that's where the ease of training comes in. The ease of use comes in. People can just intuitively uh, pick it up and start using it. And that's again, great. it does have the intercom and paging. So, you rather than just tolerate somebody, which they would probably most likely just do at a restaurant because it's faster uh, if you're close by, but you can actually page through the system as well. So you can page through the system. Can you also play um, music through the whole system? That would still be through the, through, oh, um, I see what you're saying. You would still, so the music on hold obviously through, you know, done through the service, um, but to, broadcast it you would still need the PA one is that, am I saying that correct again yeah yeah so um the yeah the M100 is not like a full PBX or anything like that so that's why we're definitely still reliant on the SIP service and any features that um the SIP service support um would get supported on this so of course if you have music on hold um tied into your system then if you put it on hold you're still going to get that um, music on hold piped through on the calls themselves but then yes if you were going to try and um, play music like over the actual um, business itself, you would want to get something like a, a PA1 or just a you know stereo system or whatever hooked up to, to speakers. That's great. The, the, the flexibility that, that Snome has developed or engineers making this, you know, so many different ways to do it. Um, what about keyline emulation? What are some of the benefits there, Corey? And if you want, I can talk about this, Corey. Sure. Yeah, actually. Yeah, so yeah. that's great. I'll um, give you something to do. Yeah. <laughs> product, so, product, product, right? Yeah. yeah sorry. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of like this, this phone is dear to my heart, but um, you know, we, we actually have been working um, with phones, of course, for quite a while um, being B tech and we have, you know, both residential and business, but we always saw um, that whole blinking light, um, the old four, uh, four line key systems as a big benefit to a lot of customers, especially um, as, as Corey mentioned, those customers that have like a high turnover rate um, and, you know, or they just, you know, they're very busy and they didn't have time to work with um, transfers and parks and stuff like that. And so we always saw that even in today's day and age, there is this benefit of being able to visually see that call coming in and being also being able to see held calls, not only on the desk sets, because of course we've had um, desk phones being able to have that ability for quite a while, but also on the cordless handset. Um, 
were the first one on the market that actually put that line indication right on the handset. So if you know you have a workforce that's kind of roaming around the the, uh, the building, and they get an incoming call, they can just look at that phone, see that a call's coming in, they can answer it by hitting that flashing button, they can put it back on hold because if they need to send that call, to, you know, over to the parts department or maybe um, back to the sales staff or something like that, they can just do like a intercom page. Um, to let them know, hey, you got, you know, parts, you got to call in line two. And they can actually see that visual representation to make sure that, hey, that line actually did get picked back up by somebody. And they don't just have to forget about it. And then on the same side, the person that's actually answering the call, they just have to look for the flashing light. Hey, somebody's there, you know, and, you know, whether it's a, a held call or an incoming call, they know that there's always somebody there that needs to be um, dealt with because they've got that flashing light. And the great thing is, it, these aren't just uh, key line emulation keys. These are fully programmable keys. So if you wanna use it in that shared environment where let's say you know, your, your typical business and you have your, your main number. So like I know for our office, right? Like our, our main number is the, the 1200 number. That's when you call and you want you know, multiple phones to ring. But maybe you don't necessarily need that. Maybe you, well, I only need like two of my lines to ring everybody's phones. Well, you could easily program like let's say line four as a private extension for everybody else as well. So your, your sales in the back, maybe your ordering person in the back, um, maybe your warehouse, you want them to have all separate extensions so they can have their own DID and their own voicemail. You can totally program additional accounts since we do support up to um, eight SIP accounts and 10 phones and just say, okay, well, line four is everybody's own private extension with their own private voicemail, but any, anybody that calls into the business, the main business number, that's going to ring, you know, line one, then the second call is going to ring line two, and then the third call is going to ring line three. So we, we definitely wanted to give the flexibility to support, um, you know, any kind of setup that's going to work for your customers and yeah, make it easy for them to use the phone and to move those calls around however they need. Does the M100 have both hard keys and soft keys or just hard keys? Uh, just hard keys. Okay, but yeah, I, mean, well, I guess the, the the M10 and the M10R they do have uh, two soft keys, I guess. And and this supports things like busy lamp field, which is so important when you pick up a line, you don't pick up a call that somebody else is on, right? So um, it is kind of like a closed system. So we don't support. Let, let's say you had a mixed environment where you did have this deployed um, with some of our desk sets, like the 735, where you had somebody else's phone in there. We're not going to support um, like true busy lamp field. Um, in the SIP sense, where if you're getting a SIP notify, that's going to say, oh, this extension is busy, so it's going to ring that. So these line keys are all uh, managed by us. Uh, essentially, the, the phone is the M100, um, and that's what's getting all the phone calls. It's just that we're indexing all of those calls to the deck devices that we have registered, and that's where that line indication is showing up. And that's also why, unlike almost any other uh, deck phone out there, uh, most decked phones are actually limited to only two concurrent calls because when the decked handset gets a call, those calls are actually kind of married directly to that handset. So even if you put a call on hold that held calls on that specific handset, well, we are pulling everything back to the base and the base is basically always talking to the different handsets and just giving the indications, Hey, the, you know, handset two, you need to be lighting um, these lines up. And if a call gets held, it's held at the M100, it frees up the handset and just gives the handset the indication. Because of that, you can literally manage six calls on the uh, cordless desk set and the cordless handsets. So even if you had somebody that's getting, like, you know, they're answering four calls at once, they can answer a call, put it on hold, answer the second call, put that on hold, answer the third call, transfer the third call to somebody else, go back to the first call. Um, so up, up to six of those calls can be managed on one handset. Okay, really complete and what sounds like a very easy to use and easy deployment. We've been talking a lot about restaurants. Why don't we switch over a little bit and, and dive a little into retailers because retail stores are slightly different than restaurants, volume, traffic, noise, locations, floor, you know, you have to go out on the floor and check stock. What are some of the applications that you're seeing of the SNOM devices in a retail environment? 
Well, Ian, you, you, you handled that so well. Do you have, <laughs> I appreciate that. I shop a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, and again, a lot of the same um, needs are, you know, required because especially in retail where you have, for example, a, a lot of, you know, a lot of part-time employees, a lot of, a lot of turnover, then having that flexibility, ease of use is, is helpful there. But as you noted, you know, retail, you obviously have a lot of product on display. So you have a larger footprint. And again, that's where deck does definitely come in handy and allows you coverage, right? So you are able to, you know, check things throughout the floor without having to worry about your call or without having to put somebody on hold and go run out on the floor and check something. So having, you know, the, the flexibility to have a decked handset um, really, really gives the, you know, the retail store an advantage to be able to handle the calls without having to run around back and forth too much. Um, that's probably the advantage over, say, a, a, a restaurant where you're pretty much going to be managing the call from wherever you take it. Um, retail, obviously, you know, you do stock checks, you do inventory, you do price checks. There's a lot of times where you're running around the building even more so than a, than a restaurant on a call. A, a great example of deck phones in use is probably either Lowe's, the home improvement store, or Home Depot, because those people are, you know, they've got their sections, like one person's got lighting, another one's got plumbing, another one's got electrical, but exactly. they're all over the store. They're going to the back of the warehouse area to look for back stock. They're looking to see what's come in, that they're gonna put out on the floor. They're up on the ladder, pulling things down from <laughs> 15 feet high, and they're on the phone doing a stock check, saying, yeah, we've got uh, 12 of those uh, HK4722, 11 B's here. Yes, we got them. Come on down. We'll put them aside for you. And that's a great example of deck in use because if you think about Lowe's or Home Depot, those are clear span buildings. You know, when I say clear span, they go from end to end, you know, they're 100 yards by 200 yards. And then there's nothing but racks in the middle, but it's all clear air. So the decked environment there, and, and if you wa walk around, or look around, you'll see the deck base stations uh, up on the ceiling somewhere or up against the wall next to the security light that has to come on in case the building loses power. So it's, it's really, you know, that's a great use case. Unlike um, some, some smaller footprints like a bookshop, which also needs it, and it's the same thing. You have to go out and check. You have the latest book by so-and-so, the latest J.T. Dowling, you know, Rowling's from you know because your kids want them so there's there's a a great use case for people who are quote what i say walking around running around managing by walking around where the deck devices are far better than a cell phone and certainly better than having to go run and then have that really long cord well, let me go check oh it only ends i need 10 more feet i'll put the phone down i'll be right back and they could be talking to the person the whole time Exactly. Exactly. Great point. Any great point. So, um, so I think this, this, you know, Deck and Kaylee was definitely our focus today. Um, but I would like to touch on briefly our, you know, the desk phones we have, and then I'm going to follow back up on your, uh, your speaker phone, uh, your, your conference okay. phone point here. Um, great. And maybe there we go. Um, so <laughs> the primary desk phones we have, and these also can be deployed and are deployed in restaurant retails as well. Um, we did a, we did a video, for example, where I know we have the D785 where we did kind of a, a customer slash, uh, partner focus video. Um, and you know, they were using that in a, in a, in a burger place, um, old back, back East. Um, so the D785 and the D735, D717, those all have, um, the, you know, the USB port, um, they all have support between six to 12 accounts, um, but they all have programmable keys. Uh, the D717 is the most basic and then it has three, but the other ones have uh, 24. Um, it's actually, I think it's 18 and, and 24 programmable keys as well. Um, really competitive price points for the features that they have. Um, and I won't go too deeply into it just to try to, you know, try to, try to move on and cover the uh, comfort zones there as well. But if you have any questions on this, um, you know, feel free to, to holler at us too. One other point I was going to make is um, before I forget too, um, real quick, Ian had mentioned that he's got some videos 
that he's done on the KLE. If that's an interest to any of you, please just let me know, ping me or Andy, and I will make sure he's got our VTech workshop, which shows a lot of those, like how the KLE works, you know, how to do some basic programming. Um, we can share those with you guys as well. Cool. That'd be great. All right. So here we go. So conference phones. So the C520 uh, we have had out for, uh, for a while. I think that's been out for about a year and a half at least. Um, the C520 is unique in that it does have the two decked um, comp, uh, mics that will charge in the base itself. Um, so the C520 you know, does come with two mics. Um, it is a Bluetooth, so you can pair a mobile device to it as well. Um, it'll support up to three SIP lines. Uh, it has the ability to pair with this C52 expansion speakerphone. Now, that's the same speakerphone we were just talking about with those desk sets that you can pair with the USB deck dongle. Um, so with this C52 or C520 conference phone, you can pair up to three of those, which covers a very large footprint. Obviously, if you've got a very large room, you can put these throughout the, the room. So you have the mic and the speaker built into them there. Um, I'm going to skip to the C620. So here is our new product. Uh, and this is one we're actually giving one of these away today. Um, or I should say Andy's giving one of these away today. <laughs> I love giving things away. <laughs> um, so the C620 is decked. It is truly wireless. So there is a base that plugs in. And this goes back to your point, Andy. This can plug in inside your house, for example. You can take the C620 outside with you put it down on your, in front of your pool on your patio furniture and have a conference call out back. Um, it will communicate back to the base and you are truly uh, wireless. You can actually talk for 24 hours on this thing with, uh, in narrow band. And I think it's 12 hours in wide band. Ian, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, it does give you true flexibility to move th throughout, throughout the house um, and put it down. And if you get forced into a closet to have a conference call, then, so be it, you can take this with you. Um, or if you get the joy of going outside uh, in an area where you don't have a lot of smoke like we do, um, then it gives you again some flexibility on where you can take that call. With this also, one, one other note on this is it does give you the ability to expand only two speaker phones because it's decked, it does reduce the, where the 520 gives you three, this will give you just two expansion slots here. But the key is that you can use these together. And you can also use it with the deck base station. Correct. Okay. So this has I its own, this, yeah, this has its own deck. It, is, it right. is a different deck base what's station. What's great about this is for those of you who op have customers with restaurants, and as restaurants begin to have people coming back in for group dinners in what's known as a PDR, the private dining room, a lot of times they'll do presentations and sometimes they'll do video conferencing presentations with the big screen up there. And you can literally put this anywhere in that room, or you can put what's great is the satellite microphones can also be spread out. So everybody sounds like they're sitting right around the, the, the main wireless conference base, but really they're spread out around the table. What's the range for the, for the satellites? Ian, you want to take that one? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> the, this is all about 150 feet. Um, we don't have like a true measurement because it really is meant to kind of um, kind of coexist in one like large room. Um, but it, I think typically we're looking at about 150 feet, both oh, for the fine. microphones Ian, and the seating. The, the typical private dining room is is you know about the size of a large dining room in somebody's home. 150 yep. feet is is enormous, ginormous, as a friend of mine used to say. <laughs> you, you don't need that much room, but by spreading the remotes around that table, and how many remotes can a C620 support? Only two, or can it support more than two? Uh, two C52s, yep. Yeah. Okay, so then you could also place some C52 expansion speaker phones around there, and literally, as you're doing social distancing with people all spread six feet apart in a in a oversized dining room or a private dining room, they could all be part of the conversation. That's what makes this such a useful and, and dynamite piece of equipment. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and then 
again, probably don't need to spend too much time on it because most people know about this, but this is the PA one we were discussing, which does allow you to do broadcasts for uh, announcements uh, and even play music through as well. Cool. Very cool. This slide we discussed already, again, that shows you the, the same C52 um, that you can use with any of those D700 series phones. Um, so this is one thing I def definitely want to touch on here. We, we launched a trade-in program uh, in J on July 15th. And what it is, it's an end-user trade-in program. Um, we set up a website. We work with a third-party company. So it's a very easy trade-in program rebate that your customer will just need to basically have a copy of the receipt scan and turn in uh, the models of the phones are they're replacing um, and the, they just need to be an authorized reseller. So as long as you're an authorized reseller, um, there's not any kind of chore to do it. If you want to become an authorized reseller, you just need to sign up. Um, and actually on that note, we do have for this webinar, we're actually giving a notebook, a pen and a stress ball for any new partners that sign up uh, from this webinar um, for SkySwitch. Um, so if, just to give you an idea of what we're looking at for the rebates, um, the D785 is as much as $20 for the end user. Um, these are things that, again, this is the benefit of the, of the person who's using the phone, but it actually is a very important tool for the person who's quoting and for selling the phone. So $20 off per phone is a, is a pretty dramatic difference if you're talking 785. Um, but even the D120 does have a $3 rebate um, but the D700 series, 10, 15, and 20 dollars, pretty healthy rebate per phone. Um, and again, it's a very easy rebate program to use. It's incredibly simple. Uh, we've done a couple samples myself, and couldn't be a whole lot easier. Um, the Kaylee also has it. So, if you're talking about handsets, we've got end user rebate for five dollars on that that M10. The rugged version has ten dollars, and the, the M18 dust set has ten. Uh, $18, sorry, $10 for that as well. It's not on the base, it's only on the individual phones, but each phone would have a rebate that the customer can then um, apply for there as well as your sale price. Um, that you basically at both right now. So, and use a rebate and the sale price on the, the uh, KLE, the M M100 system. And you don't have to just trade in um, Snow Gear, they can trade in some competitors gear as well right yeah i think good excellent points um so the intention is hopefully they do trade in competitors gear um <laughs> so if it is snome if it is uh snome you know vtech at&t any of those brands um they would just need to have it for at least a year and if they had it for at least a year if it's any business class type um system then the trade-in applies if it's a competitor, and again, it's a business, not a home phone is the point, right? If it's any business class type phone, whether it's analog or SIP of any competitor, it, it, you know, if they bought it yesterday, we'll still honor the rebate. So if it's one of ours, it's a year. If it's anybody else, we'll honor it from, from the very beginning. So it could be an instant rebate if somebody bought something and said, I don't like this, give me the snow gear. Yep, absolutely. That's great. And the, and then the, uh, the conference phones also do have uh, an even healthier uh, rebate on them as well. So they're $35 each on the, on the conference phones. Very healthy rebates, very, uh, very rich. And obviously it provides a really good opportunity for everyone to make better margins, get newer product, which means a longer warranty. And of course, you guys support everything here in the States. I know we don't have Simon on the call right now. He's the king of support but you guys are here. It's not like it's going offshore. Right. Well, technically not in the States because he's Canadian, but oh, you know, well. <laughs> up, up, we refer to this as the upper US. <laughs> but yes, North America. So we do have, obviously we have Ian Mitchell. He's a, you know, a product team here. Um, you know, he's with me. I'm in Oregon as well. So we have sales, we have marketing, we have product, we have sales engineer, we have uh, we also have a customer service 800 number. So we have live support on top of our sales engineer. Um, so all of that is here based, including our distribution warehouses in San Antonio. Um, so we have all of that based here in North America. And really it's just Simon that makes us say North America as opposed to United States. US. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Great. How do people get in touch with you? So either, either way, um, there's my email address. Um, be happy to give you my, my phone number as well. Um, I didn't put it on here, but my direct line, if anybody wants it, it's 503-596-1330. Um, otherwise, you can just do uh, K. Kather at VTech Phones. Um, Simon Bradbrook is a sales engineer for uh, SkySwitch, and he's you know he's happy to work with any interop uh, that you need to do as well. Uh, he's S. Bradbrook at VTech Phones. Um, Ian uh, can probably reach probably through me if you if you need to reach Ian. He's happy to answer questions as well. Um, but I'll, I, if you'd like to talk to him, just reach out to me, and I'll, I'll put you in contact with him as well. That's great. Speaking of questions. We have some questions that have been both in the chat and in the um, and in the Q and A. Um, why don't you talk a little bit before we do that about your new welcome kit for new partners in the Stone Partner Program, and then because that's going to address a bunch of things, and then I'll dive into the questions in the time we have remaining. Yeah. So we have. So I'll, I'll touch base on a couple of things here. So this is actually what we're. I mentioned we're giving away six C six twenty. Um, so we are, we have given to Sky Switch for Andy and team to uh, draw and give away a C620 as well as a Kaylee system. So you will have, uh, we'll have two different things there. Um, there's also going to be, again, anybody who registers new as a Snow partner from the webinar here, we have kind of a welcome kit, which is, there's a, it's actually a pretty nice uh, Snow notebook. Uh, I didn't have a picture of it to put up here, unfortunately, uh, but I have one in front of me. It's actually a nice small notebook uh, with a snow pen and with a snow stress ball. So that'll be anybody who, who registers here as well. Cool. First question that came up was from um, Anthony Goss. He wants to know if snow offers any kind of acoustic fence. If we're talking about um, like the noise isolation on the near side so it um, reduces the transmit from your desk phone in case there's like barking dogs and stuff we don't have um, like a, a, an actual kind of like programmed noise fencing um, we do have uh, you know, we do try and tune it to where we're only kind of picking up the, the, the closer one, but it's not like a true algorithm that's like actually scanning through and trying to remove um, noises that are separate from the speaker. Okay, so that would probably be a no. Um, yeah, yeah, no, sorry. Bill Smith wanted to know, are we going to hear anything more about the Snome Deck headsets? So in the Snome, so we, in the Snome Deck headset, I don't think we're going to release a Snome Dex headset in the near future. We do have some uh, VTech branded decked headsets that will pair with that decked uh, dongle, but it, we don't have a plan, correct me if I'm wrong, Ian, to release the Snome branded decked headsets in the near future, correct? No, no I don't think so. Um, okay. So there's a, so, so we'll, pair with them with with the VTech and I uh, I think there's actually an at t one but I know there's a there's a VTech one that we'll we'll pair with and I can get you that information. Great. Bill also said he's used the PA1. It's fantastic. It's simple, reliable, well priced at much less than the competition. And he wants to demo the KLE system. So please pick me. We'll see Bill <laughs> you a lot of awards and things like that. Um, <laughs> Ebi Ninan wants to know, is this configured for auto provisioning? Um, I imagine he's talking about the deck devices. Um, Corey, yep, if you order through the Sky Switch store, it will be it'll provisioned uh, for Sky Switch, correct? Um, Darren Sidweek says, most of the motorcycle, ATV, snowmobile, and motorsports store showrooms around my area use cordless. The system, meaning the deck, will be easier to sell with the line keys as they're used to multi-line analog systems. Great to see that it's available. Um, is there a contact closure for tying to paging systems though, he wants to know. On the, um, I'm assuming he's talking about the D100s. 
Uh, you were talking about the, the PA1. I actually just answered that in text. Um, I would definitely recommend, so, so one, there are uh, multiple um, different IO connections that we have on the PA1. And we do have a really great resource called uh, service.snome.com. And I would recommend to go there, especially for the PA1, because there's a lot of different ways to, to possibly hook it up, whether you're trying to um, hook up into um, both input and output of audio for like a door phone, or if you're trying to use the multicast relay functionality of the PA1, um, that's something that I don't think we talked about. Um, but we actually support up to four SIP accounts on the PA1. And part of the reasons of doing that is to actually allow a multicast relay. So instead of having to have your phone itself work with multicast paging and going into like some sub menu where you're kind of picking which multicast uh, paging zone you want to reach, you have the PA1 do that and it basically um, will subscribe to a different multicast channel and then that will have an extension on it. That way from any phone, you just call the extension and it automatically triggers the multicast um, page through that relay system and broadcasts it out. So you don't have to have people like go through different menus. You just say, oh, if we call extension, you know, 801, that's the relay that's gonna hit like, you know, this zone of the building. And if you go to extension 802, that gets like the, you know, all zones of the building for, for multicast paging and stuff. Um, but definitely recommend service.snom.com you're gonna see a lot of um, really helpful information, both um, connector guides and even FAQs. I'll kind of walk you through how to connect up to those different things. Another question from Darren on the PA1. Is there a volume adjustment or a mic input? Uh, yes, we do have both of those. Okay. And then let this one, I'm gonna name it Corey. And this is the last question we have because we are running just a tad over. Darren wants to know on the rebate program, are the devices shipped back to Snome or where? No, no, nope. we just we just want to confirm that they have them, um, and they do not actually need to come back to us. So they're not even they don't have to be taken out of service. No, nope, okay. they don't. What a great deal! Just say you have these phones, <laughs> take a picture of them, send the serial number, something in, and get free money. I like that. We, we made it pretty easy. Well, so. another. This was a great webinar. And by the way, you guys did a fantastic job with the, um, with the presentation and obviously Ian filling in last minute for Simon. We'll get Simon for skipping out on today. You know, he's a, <laughs> Thank you, know, he's Ian, a by the way, good, appreciate it. Yeah, really good job. Um, yeah, three no lucky problem. attendees are gonna be chosen today to win one of the following prizes. The first one is a hundred dollar credit in the SkySwitch store that you can use only on Snome Gear, that's something, because we want you shopping with us. We don't want you shopping elsewhere. We want you shopping in the store. Also, the Snome 620 deck conference phone. I love that device. I think it has one of the most utilitarian uh, values of speaker phones on the market today. The M100 KLE system, complete with an M100, M10, and M18. You're gonna get all that. So we're really good you know, in the way of prizes. Those of you who ask questions, you always have a better chance of winning a prize. Those of you who sit back and lurk, well, you do have a chance, but the odds of winning go way, way, way down. I'm Andy Abrams, and I want to thank Erica Vasquez for a great job at the controls producing today's webinar. Um, I want to thank, of course, Ian and Corey for being here. Please come back next week um, when you have our friends from Poly, and they're going to talk about you had me at remote. Um, the webinar will be discussing the many troubleshooting scenarios you need as a reseller to access the phone, and Poly will be providing SkySwitch partners with a powerful remote toolkit for free, where you can run remote packet capture, change logging levels, pull logs, check MOS scores, check interference, or check interface, and pot and port status remotely reboot a device, check or update a configuration, and much, much, much more. Keep an eye out for the information on how to register for next Tuesday's webinar. Until then, thank you to our team from Snome Americas. You guys are awesome. I'm Andy Abramson. Have a great Tuesday or whatever day you're listening to this webinar. So long. <laughs>